right off the bat, let's read the title of the study. Bone, not adrenaline, drives fight or flight response. That sounds like a paradox. Often we believe it's the adrenal glands. Well, the research wanted to say, well, how is acute stress responses happening or fight or flight? If the adrenal glands in animals have been removed, people suffer from adrenal insufficiency, why is this acute stress response still continuing? Well, the researchers asked this question and they found osteocalcin produced by the skeletal system is really what triggers the fight or flight response. Now, looking at this particular chart, you could see how it goes from there to fight or flight. Now, that also brings up an incredibly, incredibly intriguing way to look at the skeletal system itself. Most of us believe a healthy skeletal system is no more than basically reduction of fracture risk or bone density. Well, when you look now at the impact the skeletal system has over the entire biology, including osteocalcin, we really have to look at what a healthy skeletal system is. Because if you're just judging a healthy skeleton by reduction in fracture risk, then it's much like saying an egg is fresh because it's shaped like an egg. It does not do it justice. So, to proceed, look at osteocalcin. That's just recent research, and again, produced by bone. So let's get right into the research as follows. And I'm gonna skip around a little bit. I'm gonna go more towards the end of the research uh, so we don't repeat too much of what we just said now. But it's fascinating. And before I proceed too, when going through this, this is an answer. You start have to start applying what is the right question to this particular answer in regard to stress, anxiety, so on and so forth, osteocalcium balance, the whole lineup. It is just the mind begins to race. But to proceed as follows. Bone, not adrenaline, drives fight or flight response. Adrenaline, not necessary for fight or flight. The findings may also explain why animals without adrenal glands and adrenal insufficient patients with no means of producing adrenaline or other adrenal hormones can develop an acute stress response, ASR. Among mice, this capability disappeared when the mice were unable to produce large amounts of osteocalcin. This shows us that circulating levels of osteocalcin are enough to drive the acute stress response, quoting the researcher. A little bit of the backstory, and because it's very important that we understand the backstory, what led the researchers to look at the skeletal system as follows. Backstory, why bone? The view of bones as merely an assembly of calcified tubes is deeply entrenched in a biomedical culture, meaning a lot of us think a healthy skeletal system is one that is less prone to breakage. Au contraire. But about a decade ago, his lab hypothesized and demonstrated that the skeletal, skeleton, apologize, has hidden influences on other organs. The research revealed that the skeletal, skeleton, releases osteocalcin which travels through the bloodstream to affect the functions of the biology of the pancreas, the brain, the muscles, and the other organs. A series of studies since then have shown that osteocalcin helps regulate metabolism by increasing the ability of cells to take in glucose, improves memory, helps animals run faster, and with greater endurance. Why does bone have all these seemingly unrelated effects on other organs? The history. Quote, if you think a bone is something that evolved to protect the organism from danger, the skull protects the brain from trauma, the skeleton allows vertebrae to escape predators, and even the bones in the ear alert us to help approaching, uh, uh, alert us to approaching danger. The hormonal functions of osteocalcin begin to make sense. If bone evolved as a means to escape danger, the researcher hypothesized that the skeleton should also be involved in the acute stress response which is activated in the presence of danger. All right, we're gonna to go to the full study here. And by the way, the full study is published and I'll have the links, of course, the UIs, the whole lineup. To proceed in context and significance. A major question in skeletal biology is to understand why bone, through the hormone osteocalcin, favors energy metabolism, reproduction, memory, and the ability to exercise. Since most of these functions abet survival in unpredictably hostile environments such as the wild, according to the research, researchers, we surmised that bone involved to enable vertebrae 
to overcome acute danger. In support of this notion, the study shows that animals need osteocalcin to develop an acute stress response, a function critical to survival in the wild. When animals encounter an immediate danger, a brain-derived signal stimulates the release of osteocalcin from bone. Once released, osteocalcin turns off the parasympathetic or rest and digest arm of the autonomic nervous system and thereby allows the acute stress response to proceed. Again, the title of the research to conclude, bone, not adrenaline, drives fight or flight response. The researchers did also have a caveat. There may be other organs involved in the process as well. But right now, osteocalcin is a major, major key in regard to that acute stress response, regardless. So, the information is there. It's fully published. It really, again, the mind starts to race. People with stress, anxiety, this, that, or whatever. You start to draw on the connections. So, I encourage you to look at the full published study. It may answer some of your questions, get an idea to method and methodology the research should utilize, and I always encourage you to go into the full study just in case some confounding factors of publisher bias may be interjected by accident. But it's there, the link will be there on the YouTube channel. Again, the only way I get this information to you is if you subscribe, so you're more than welcome to subscribe, or not, either way, your option. But thank you very, very much for listening. This is just amazing, and I can't wait for further research to come out uh, in regard to this topic. Again, we're after channel signing off. Thank you for listening. And I look forward to seeing you all once again in seven days. Catch you then. Bye.